Hi, Flosstube. My name is Nithya, and you are at my Flosstube channel, Daybreak Stitchery. Um, this is my ninth video, I think, since joining Flosstube. So that means um, we're talking about cross stitch. It's the end of the month. I usually do kind of end of the month recap on what I've been stitching on. And um, so if you are interested in cross stitch or are a cross stitcher or just um, enjoy arts and crafts, I think this is going to be for you. So I have an unbelievable amount of stuff to show you because I've been off this month and I've been stitching almost the whole time. We usually, my husband Steve and I would normally be traveling um, over the summer, um, at least a little bit, but we moved as you, some of you who have been watching know. So um, our adventure this summer is our house, <laughs> taking care of our house. So uh, it's good because it's given me a lot of time to stitch. So I have tons to show you. Um, so we're just going to get into it. So I have uh, a few finished items that we're going to start with. I haven't fully finished anything yet, although I have the bits and pieces needed to fully finish some things. I've been um, picking up some, I broke, some of you who, who've been watching, you know that I've been trying to go with no new haul, not buying new stuff, but I broke it after day 46 because I went to Goodwill and I found a bunch of frames. So um, I have frames and then I picked up, I right after that I went to Michael's and picked up acid-free foam board to mat projects. So I have all the bits and pieces. I have pins and everything. I just haven't like put it all together yet. So this is my first finish. And you're going to recognize this one um, because I talked about it in my, I think maybe going back to my very first video. Let me show you a closer view here. And this is a pattern by 2x2 two two Stitch on Etsy. And it's called, um, their naming conventions are a little odd. It's it's called the Ornament Sampler or Carpet Sampler. When you download the file, when you purchase and download the file, it's called Sampler 23, the file name. So that's what I call it. I call it Sampler 23. And it's actually part of a very large sampler. So this is just actually a quarter of the motifs. There are four more of these squares like this, one, two, three, four, like in a big cute, in a big square. And then this border right here goes all the way around. So I didn't quite want to make it so large. This was one of my first projects that I stitched on linen. So I didn't want to do something huge on linen. I wanted to try to finish something. So um, I just kind of reorganized the borders in it and I chose my favorite of the four square motifs. And that's what. Um, so that's what it's come out to. This is on 36 count raw natural linen, which is one of my favorites. It's so simple, but it's got just enough, like it's not white. It's just enough beige to really allow colors to pop out. And this is a oh, gorgeous DMC 550, which I love, love, love. I already started, I'll show you in a little bit. I already started another monochromatic piece on a raw natural linen with with um. 36 count and a DMC color just because I enjoyed this one so much. I'm gonna have to see how to frame this one because it's not a square and it's not quite like an eight by 10. It's it's shorter lengthwise. So I'm not quite sure yet how I'm gonna how I'm gonna finish it. Maybe I can see if I can get a special mat cut for it or something or if special mats are available. Um, but I'll have to see what I what I can do with that. But so happy. I'm I'm also so happy that I finished an old project because if you know me, you know I start way too many projects. Today, uh, you're going to see more than I've started. So it's just nice to finish an old piece. Um, if I can, I, I'm, um, I have a lot more time to edit my videos now, but I'll try to throw in, or maybe I will have already thrown in a picture of like the full, what the full one looks like. And then the link to this project pattern on Etsy and so many other things I'll be linking in the description below. So if you like anything that you see, um, you know, you'll be able to find it. Okay, so that was one finish. Next finish is an ink circles pattern. I love ink circles. It looks like this. And this is blue velvet. And this was one of the uh, very recent releases. Um, was it during the latest? It might have been during the March Needlework Expo. This was one of the new patterns that came out. Hold it up a little bit closer so you can see. 
I just love it. I love ink circles. I love all these intricate motifs and all everything that weaves together. Um, there's a corresponding, there's a piece that's called red velvet as well, which I, I haven't picked up to stitch on. I just picked up this one as part of my needlework expo purchases. And this was a really easy one to finish because um, a lot of their standard patterns by ink circles are 115 by 115 stitches. And this was 93 by 93. So it was actually a little bit smaller. This is on 18 count barnwood. Uh, it's Ada. So you can kind of see, see the little square. You can see that it's Ada squares. And it's a small, this is what, like an eight by 11, you know, the smallest size fabric you can get. Um, I probably got this at one, two, three stitch. And the um, floss is DM, no, it's not DMC. It's Silks For You. It's Silks For You zero, PR075, which is this bright, glorious blue. I just love it. I was actually struggling when I received, that was the blue, I've talked about it in my videos before. When I received it, it was just such a shocking, bright electric blue. I wasn't sure what I could do with it, but it's perfect for these monochromatic patterns. And then I paired it up with this barnwood is so kind of dull, so I thought it would really allow the blue to pop out. And I have square, at the thrift store, I picked up some square frames for this. Um, that could work with this. This is a pretty, I think this will be a, an easy standard size to try to find a frame for. So that was Ink Circles, um, Blue Velvet was the pattern. Okay, this one. So at once I went to Goodwill to get frames and then Michael's to get, I got some new floss boxes because I'm organizing my flosses and um, the foam board and everything. Well, then I started a little bit of a binge. So I picked up patterns and some fabric and some other things too. So this is actually a start and finish just this month. I got it early in June, like maybe the second week of June, and I finished it. It only took me like a week and a half to do this one. This is um, Hello from Liz Matthews is the designer. And it, I just thought the sentiment was so cute and sweet. Your heart and my heart are very, very old friends. I feel like there are a lot of people who like this is meaningful when I th it reminds me a lot of of a lot of people I have a friend of mine who um is just such a precious friend I have a lot of pressure all my friends are precious but I have one who moved away to Germany and she's just said like we are totally like soul sisters and this like I had her in mind when I thought it when I stitched this um so this is I'll show you the linen it's 32 count antique rose linen by primitive hair and so it is it to me it doesn't look pink. i mean it is kind of pink it's like a beigey pink um i know that probably won't come out you will probably won't see it that way but when i'm looking at it close up that's what it looks like so it's a really great neutral color for i think a lot of colors stand out well on this like you could probably stitch something with a white that has white in the pattern it would look gorgeous on this it would stand out and um the color, the floss color is DMC 336, just navy blue DMC. So I just love this one. And um, I'm, a, I'm just being a big chicken about it. I have cut foam board the right size to match this, um, to frame this. And I've also got a frame. This is actually an old thrift store frame that I found from like a, when we were moving, I put all my old spare frames together just because I've always been getting like tomorrow I'm going antiquing with a friend of mine and we're going to go look for more frames. Um, but so this frame I painted. So the original color was like a gold. You can kind of still see, see on these bars here, you can see that that gold pe peeking out. It was like a gold and silver um, finish, but I painted it over just with like cheap, Acrylic paint from Michaels. This is folk art, and the color is midnight. They have a navy blue, which is like a tinge lighter. This midnight is a tinge darker, um, so you get this color. And it's a really—I mean, I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to painting. It was so easy. I did two coats on it, and I just used like a cheap, like a children's um, paintbrush that comes in like with children's paints and stuff. Um, just what they had at the craft store. So. I think that turned out pretty well. And because it's such a dark blue, I think it's gonna go great with this. Like I think it'll, I'm not holding it up correctly, but I think you get the idea. I think it'll look pretty good with that. So 
I, I just feel nervous about pinning down the linen, like not having it perfectly set. Cause it's going to, the way the size of the stitching, it's going to be like just flush with these sides. And I've been watching videos like, um, Vanna Pfeiffer has a lot of finishing videos. Elizabeth, uh, Liz, um, who's Elizabeth and Ken Stitch, she's got finishing videos. Um, I think it was Eric, the gals from Caterpillar Cross Stitch. I know a couple of them are the gals from Steel, Steel City Stitchers. They did a video with like tips on how to set properly center and frame and mat your piece on foam board. So I know it's got to be possible to do. I'm just nervous to do it. Um, but this month, maybe I'll give it a go this month and then I can actually have a fully finished object to show you. So we'll see about that. That was, um, hello from Liz Matthews and the pattern is called old friends. I stitched with, um, three threads. I'll show you close up. It's 32 count and I use three strands over two. So I like, you know me, I like full, full cover coverage, no gaps in there. Okay. Um, and I have one more finish to show you. And this was also a start and a finish this month. So um, this one, this cute little thing, it's called Litha. And Litha is the name for summer solstice. It's, it's um, I guess, I don't know, it's Scandinavian maybe? I'd have to check on that. Let me hold it closer up so you can see. Isn't it pretty cute? It's, um... Part of a free series by Primitive Hair. They have an entire series of free patterns dedicated to pagan holidays. And I've seen two people stitch on not this one, but on one of the other holidays, Beltane. And um, one of them is Carly, who's Veggie Stitches, who's got an excellent, she's a new floss tuber and she's excellent. You just, just like pause this video and go watch her. She's got so many great things she's stitching on and she dyes yarn and ever. She's just so cool. So I um, first saw this series on her floss tubes. And then I also, I've been watching a lot of um, Julie, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. And she did, she also stitched on Beltane at some point. I think I was watching one of her whip parades and it showed up. Um, but I love it. And I chose Summer Solstice because the year that my partner and I got married, it happened to fall on Summer Solstice. And that was unintentional. So like someone pointed it out to us afterwards. But now we're so grateful because neither one of us is very sentimental or romantic when it comes to um, mild relationship milestones. We never remember. We never remember. Like, I don't, I could not tell you like when we first went out or anything. I remember the experience, but I don't remember the dates. So we both joke about it because if it, if we hadn't gotten married on summer solstice, then we would have no, we would not remember <laughs> our wedding anniversary because we just got, we did a small thing at city hall. It wasn't a big event. And, um, yeah, so now we, we joke about like whenever summer solstice, I know it's not the same every year, but at least when it comes by every year, we're like, oh yeah, so we got married around this time. So, um, so I just love that. And this, um, each month it's, um, so it's using color and cotton and it's the threads that were, I just recently got thread. I belong to the thread of the month club for color and cotton. So these came earlier. These were probably the May threads, I think, because I just got new threads. I don't know which month they were for. But so when I get the thread club, threads from Color and Cotton, which are all beautiful, I try, I've been trying to make use of them right away instead of like throwing them in a bin and not, or like stashing them somewhere and not using them. So I've been trying to find something to stitch on. So the first set that I got from them, I made that Quaker wreath that was in my old, um, my last video. And then this one, I've got Litha. And then the new club colors, I'll show you um, when I get to my plans section at the end of the video, I'll show you what I'm going to do with them. So I've been just been trying. It's really nice because it does feel like then it makes me search for smaller projects because sometimes you need, like I start a lot of really big projects and they're going to take me for, they'll take me years to finish. So it's nice to intersperse them with smaller projects. This is so cute. I don't know if you can see, I'm going to hold it up close so you can see the variegation on these beautiful coloring cotton threads. Are you kind of telling how on the words for Litha, like look at the H on Litha. See how part of it is paler than the rest? Or like on the wings of the bee, see how on right here, 
the tip of the wing is a little bit paler or like on the yellow line below, see how there's different shades? All the threads from Color and Cotton are variegated. Um, so sometimes the, that variation is so subtle, but it's really, really beautiful. When you look up close, it's just so pretty. The darkest color here was not in the Color and Cotton Club. It's DMC 4000, which is um, espresso. It's a color I use. It's a dark color I use a lot because it's brown and gray mixed together. I thought the, the pattern called for DMC 310, which is black, but it just seemed so harsh against the other colors, which were a little bit more muted. So I went with DMC 4000 instead. So super, super cute. This will be easy to frame. Surely I've got a, a frame somewhere I can use for that one. So those were my um, finishes this month. And it feels great to finish just kind of a variety of different things. Um, but in true fashion, I started quite a few things too. When I broke my haul, I joined a couple of sales, which I will, do I have them here? Yeah, I'll show, I'll show them. I'm going to do some whips for, show you some works in progress first. Um, but I do have some um, stitch alongs I joined and then just other kind of random things I picked up too. So um, works in progress. Actually, I want to check my notes real quick and make sure I didn't forget anything um, that I wanted to share with you. Oh, old friends, the old friends, hello from Liz Matthew pattern. I got that from Abby, who's a top knot stitcher, who a lot, I think a lot of cross stitchers shop from her. I just love her store. And one of the things I love about it is that somehow she lists items earlier than anywhere else. Like I, I, you probably are just like me. You have kind of your favorite shops. Like for me, it's one, two, three stitch. Abby Topknot, um, Color and Cotton, and then Etsy, like things I favorited on Etsy. And every couple of days, I just kind of make my rounds and see what's new <laughs> on, in all of those shops. And Abby always has, like, she's got new, she, right up on her main page, she has her new items that have just arrived. They're always listed before, like, definitely before they show up on 123Stitch, definitely before they show up at my local needle shop, um, Inspired Needle. And um, so it's just cool. You feel like you're getting some, like a special view of things that um, you aren't seeing anywhere else. So I really like that. And she seems like a real sweet person too. Um, okay, shall we talk about some works in progress? So my works in progress are almost, all, no, not all of them. Three of, that, four, three of them are restarts. I have been restarting old projects that I already started up and for lots of reasons if I like I was organizing floss this month and um for in order to do that I was going through all my old whips and looking at what DMC colors were in each bag so when I was cataloging my DMCs I was also pulling out the projects and looking at them and so some of them you know how it is did they spark a joy or not you know would I realistically go back to them and I thought for a lot of them, I love the pattern, but maybe not my fabric selection or my thread selection. So I'm giving a few a restart. And so far, it's going well. We will see how that goes. Okay, so my first, uh, I'm counting it as a work in progress, but it is a restart. Do you recognize this pattern? Especially like this area that's filled in over here. Uh, this is the Modern Folk Embroidery. 2021 stitch along, which yes, I have restarted. And um, you'll remember my old one. I'll see, maybe I'll see if I can put a picture up of it, but I had it on, the old one was on 25 count um, Fugana and I was using sulky threads. And what happened was at the beginning of this month, I was trying to 25 seven that project. And 25-7, you're gonna, most of you who watch Philosophy are gonna know what that is, but it's basically where you take a project that you wanna make um, good progress on and you stitch on it seven days a week, either 25 stitches a day or for 25 minutes a day, just to chip away at a project, you know? So I tried to 25-7, my old modern folk embroidery cell, and I just did not, I did not wanna pick it up. I was not <laughs> excited to work on it at all. I, I did make, me, excuse me, maybe for like a day. And then that was it. So then I thought, well, let me just try, maybe I try, this is actually my third 
attempt on it because earlier this month I had um, tried it on Ada to see maybe does it work up quicker on Ada. It worked up really quick on Ada, but I didn't like the colors of Ada that I have. I don't have much Ada in my stash. So then I thought maybe you're going too crazy with colors. Choose some more traditional colors, colors that go with your house. That's what I did, and it is working up so fast. I've only stitched on this for uh, less than a week. I've barely picked this up this month, and it's going really, really well. So I can show you um, a little bit closer so you can see what colors I'm using. So this filled-in color here is DMC 154, which is very, it, the, technically the color is very dark grape, I think. But for me, it's like a wine color. And then um, the contrasting color is DMC 4000, which here you can very clearly see how it's got gray and um, brown in it. So it's got more neutral tones, darker tones. I'm excited. I'm actually super excited to see how this turns out. And this will go great in our living room because we have these dark colors in our rug. So this is going way better. Also, I changed the fabric I use on it, clearly. I'm using, this is Vintage Country Mocha. Let me hold it up because you might be able to see some of the modeling in it. See how it's a little bit modeled? It's got different shades in it. It's beautiful, kind of antique looking. And then um, it's a 28 count that I'm stitching over two with three strands. So the stitch is basically like stitching on 14 count Ada. The stitches are really, really big, which means a bigger finished product, but I'm okay with that. It just stitches up so much quicker when the stitches are bigger like that. Um, so I'm pretty happy with good coverage. There's good coverage on it. I like how solid all the stitches are looking. So I am pretty happy with this. And I feel uh, much more motivated to work on it. The other part of my binge for this month was I bought a cheap, cheap, cheap device that... Um, Shiloh at Cross Stitch MD. She recommends in her, like if you go to any of her floss tube videos, she, in the description, she puts a list of some of the useful tools that she uses. And one of them is a cheap ta Android tablet to use with Pattern Keeper. So I finally got Pattern Keeper and that's what I'm using to track my stitches on this. And it is so helpful. It is really, really helpful. It took me a couple of nights to upload all of my PDF patterns to Pattern Keeper, but now I I feel so grateful because that like something like this, it would have taken me forever, and I surely would have frogged. I would have been pulling out stitches after making mistakes, but this is smooth, smooth going. So Pattern Keeper may absolutely makes a difference. Um, so uh, Modern Folk Embroidery Stitch Along 2021. That's one of my works in progress slash restarts. Okay, um, another restart. Let me see. I just want to check to make sure real quick that I didn't forget anything. No. Um, so the other one that I restarted is uh, Ink Circles. It's Forests of Sumatra. And I'm loving this so, so much. The end. Okay, so I'll show you here. Let me show you close up. I'm getting too excited. Do you see a little bit of variegation in the thread? I'm using Bejeweled by Classic Color Works. I want to see if I can pull it out and show you. That thread is so beautiful. I'm going to hold up a skein to show you. It is so, so beautiful. It's like a dark teal green. And it does have a little bit of variegation in it, but it's hard to see from, from this. But when you stitch it up, you can see it. And it matches more closely the called for threads, which are, it's a Gloriana silk that's called Sumatra. I think it was like specially created maybe for the pattern. Um, this is the full pattern. So I'm like basically here in the top corner. Um, so that, that called for, if you want to see what it looks like with the called for um, threads, Matt, who's MBC Stitcher, is working on this. He's made a lot of progress on it. And it's gorgeous. It's really, really beautiful. But the, the Gloriana Silks is pretty expensive. Um, Abby, Top Knot Stitcher just had a sale, 25% off. So I, I did, I'm trying some Gloriana. But 
I didn't want to kit up a whole thing that I wasn't sure I was going to complete again, because knowing me, would I finish this or would I, I don't know. So I, I went with, um, this is classic color works and it's called Bejeweled. And I chose an 18 count Ada and it is unbelievable to see how quick it works up on Ada. This is basically like four hours of stitching. It's hardly any, it's like an evening of stitching. It was hardly any time at all. And I was just thinking because I finished my old, um, you saw some, if you've been watching my old videos, you saw my henna mandala and like the blue velvet that I showed you earlier, those are on Ada and they stitched up so fast. So I thought, well, maybe I should just try to stitch something on Ada and have it work up quickly. And it, it's a miracle how different it is to stitch on Ada compared to linen. It is so much quicker and it looks pretty good. This is, um, I'm curious to see if any of the modeling will show up on this. This is Picture This Plus. The color is called Fog. Oh, it does kind of show up a little bit. When I look at this, like, head on, it does not look very much. The modeling is so, so light. Like, there's a little bit up here you can see. But on most of it, it basically looks like a white fabric. But there is a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of modeling on it. But I think it'll look pretty, It because in this, the, um, in this project, the real showstopper is the floss, I think. So this fabric really shows off that floss. So I am excited to work on this. I'm wondering if I could 25, seven, I'm still on break for a little bit, you know, this summer till um, the beginning of August. So I'm wondering if I could try to 25, seven, both this and the MFE style. Maybe I'm playing around with that idea, but I'm like, totally love stitching on this now. So much easier that, that this marks the second project now that I had originally started with sulky threads that I've given up on because my modern folk embroidery sale, the original one was with sulky and my original force of Sumatra was on sulky too. People love sulky. I know like it's a popular thread to stitch with and the colors are amazing. I think I just need to find the right fabric. I'm using it on the wrong fabric because the original, my original MFE sale was on a 25 count. I think it was just too small. Those stitches are too, too small, thick to fit in those small spaces. And then my um, forests of Sumatra, I had been stitching on like a 40 count mallow over two, but still that's pretty small. Maybe the, um, a lot of people are stitching on 18 count um, Ada. So maybe that's my next, I'll have to try selfie on 18 count Ada. Okay, um, next one. I didn't get much progress on this one. This is one I had stitched on last month too. So if you watched my video last month, you would have seen it. This is the um, Christmas sampler, sampler by Galliana Designs. And I just barely got like um, right here. These are going to be book spines. One is called Little Elf. And I don't remember what the other one. The other one just might be decorated, I think. So I didn't make much progress on this one. I had um, last month, I think I had showed you these angled parts. So this month I really just did like over here, that little tiny snowflake and then the beginnings of the book spines. But I pulled this out and I'm going to try to work on it next month too, because so many people are stitching um, for Christmas in July. So I would love to make some progress. Like there's a really cool motif. Do I have a picture? Let me see real quick if I have a picture to show you. I don't. I'll try to put a picture um, in the video since I have a little more time to edit. But the next motif that comes right here is this enormous snowflake. It's going to go right here. I would love to maybe get that motif done in July for Christmas in July. That'd be pretty. I have to work my way over to it a little bit more because I think it starts like here. Um, but that'd be really cool to make some progress on that. A lot of people are stitching Christmas in July. Um, Kim, uh, who is cataloging my stitches. Her, her floss tube is really fun to watch. She just recently did a video where she um, talked about her Christmas in July picks. And then Sunshine Stitchers, I pr I'm pretty sure they mentioned something. A lot of people are doing Christmas in July. So I think I'll pull this one back out for that and try to make a little progress on that. This is using DMC Colors. And it's one... Is it one? Yeah, it's one over one on a 32 count platinum. Platinum is a gorgeous color for fabric because it's got, um, it's hard to describe. It's like off white with like a tinge of gray, tinge of beigey gray. So it's definitely not white. So it, it, it's a nice contrast with the colors without being too shockingly white. 
So I like that one a lot. Christmas in July always reminds me of one of my favorite shows is Miss Fisher. I watch a lot of TV. One of my favorite shows is Miss Fisher Murder Mysteries. I know you guys in Australia will know her because it's set in Melbourne, Australia. It's set in the 1920s. She's like a socialite who becomes a private investigator. And it's very, um, the, the TV, ver it's based on a book by Carrie Greenwood, I think, but it's, um, the TV adaptation is very progressive. And um, she, they're, one of my favorite episodes of that show is, they, it's a Christmas in July episode where um, they go vacation in the mountains to go skiing and everything and have like a, like a, uh, because it's winter there, right? It's winter in Australia. And um, it becomes a murder mystery kind of like a la Agatha Christie because someone gets murdered and the they're all, they're vacationing with other people in the house and someone gets murdered and they have to figure out who in the house did it. So it's, it's a really good episode. It's a really great series if you're looking for a binge. The only thing is it's only available to stream now on Acorn TV, I think, which we used to have and we discontinued it after Christmas just because... We had so many, we had Disney, Disney plus and other things, but I love that's, I could binge that over and over again, that show. Um, I have, and this is another finish, which I don't know why I left it with my whips, but this is a finish and this is a big one. Um, this is Metamorphosis by Ink Circles. And I want to show it to you closer up too. So as you can maybe tell, um, and you might have seen in my last video too, this was the project I was going to be doing for Pride Month. Um, I took the fl the colors of the Progress um, Pride flag, which is kind of the newer version of the Pride flag that was designed by Daniel Quasar. And it incorporates the rainbow, the usual rainbow, but then it also includes colors for um, Trans Pride, which is this white pink and blue, and then um, people of color. There's brown and black on there too. Um, I'm so happy with this finish. It's so, so pretty. I Oh, I'm leaving the exciting part, the other exciting part of this besides this finish, which is so beautiful. Okay. It's on 36 Count Ren, uh, Winter Wren by Fox and Rabbit, which is one of my new favorite fabrics. One, because look at how these bright colors pop out on this. I mean, imagine doing a monochromatic piece on this with like this white, this is DMC 712, which is cream technically, or like this pink. Imagine doing a monochromatic piece on this with just those color, that color. It pops out so well against this dark fabric. I mean, all these, almost all these colors do. The green is a little bit washed out, but look at how that red looks on this. I mean, bright colors would would stand out gorgeous, on, do stand out gorgeous on this. So that was a surprise because I didn't know how the bright colors would, would come out and I love how they look. The second one is that I set up a fundraiser on Facebook to go along with this and I just called it my craftivism project and I put it out. When you set up a fundraiser on Facebook, you can make it public. So I will share it below so you can see what... Um, it actually, it closes today. Well, I'll, I'll put the link to it below and if it's still accessible, you can check it out in case you ever want to start a, a fundraiser on Facebook. You can see what mine looks like. Um, I was expecting, so I set up a fundraiser. Facebook says that 100% of the proceeds go to the organization. So I, my organization I had chosen was Brave Space Alliance, which is a black and trans led um, community organization here in Chicago. And they do a lot. They um, have food pantries. They have medical services, counseling, job, um, you know, job assisted, job preparation assistant. They do a lot. So um, I set up the fundraiser on Facebook and I started it out by contributing 25 bucks to it. And I set a really ambitious goal. I set it for a thousand dollars thinking like, well, let's just pick up a high amount and see what happens. I thought maybe if I was going to share it on like Instagram or something, maybe stitchers would donate to it. Um, I don't know. I had a couple of really large, I had some mostly small donors, but I had a couple of really large donors and it ended up making a thousand seventy ish dollars for that fundraiser. I couldn't believe it. I told Brave Space Alliance about it. I think they were just shocked. So, um, but I, I set it up, the description for it, I set it up by sharing with, with my Facebook friends that, you know, I've been stitching a lot. I don't, I didn't tell them about floss tube because that's, that's my space. I don't want a lot of 
people besides stitchy people in that space, but um, I told them that I'm stitching this for Pride Month and that if they felt like they could pledge to, you know, uh, to Brave Space Alliance, you know, that'd be helpful if they could consider that. And then throughout the month, like once a week, I posted in within um, your fundraiser. It, it, there's a page set up just for your fundraiser where you can post pictures and stuff. So I put progress pics up so people could see that I was actually working on something. And it also kind of gave me motivation to finish it on time, <laughs> to be honest. So super happy with that. And the size is a little awkward, but I, th I feel like I've seen at thrift stores um, sometimes framed items that, that come in long frames, but also sometimes just boards with like sayings on, wooden boards with sayings painting on, painted on them. I feel like I could mat this on foam board and then attach it to one of those. So I, I, surprisingly, I don't think it'll be hard to find a way to finish this. Um, I wanted to show you the original. This is what the original looked like. So I just adapted that. I picked my own DMC colors because I didn't want to buy more DMC. I used DMC for my stash. If you want to know the color conversions for these, I wrote them out on a note card and then I left them upstairs. So let me know if you um, want to know what colors these are and I can th put them in, I can add a comment um, to this video. So this was Metamorphosis by Ink Circles on 36 count winter wren by fox and rabbit i can't wait i binge bought more fabrics from fox and rabbit because this oh look at how i mean it's a 36 count and so on some like when i stitch on raw natural linen 36 count occasionally some of the fabric will peek out behind the stitches and that's su the super tightest coverage but on this i suspect it's super tight and i suspect it's because of the dyeing when this fabric was dyed, it probably shrank a little bit. So it's probably, it's 36 count, but it's probably closer to like a 37 or maybe even a 38 count. So the coverage is just awesome. It's just so, so dark. I love that. That's my kind of, that's my kind of coverage on that. Okay. That should have been under finishes. I don't know what I was thinking with that. Okay. I have one more. <laughs> Work for it. This is going to be a long one, guys, because we haven't even gotten to like my new starts. And as usual, I have a bunch of those. This is one more restart. So this is technically, I'm counting it as a work in progress, even though it's a restart. So this is, let me pull this thread off. Um, this is the border sampler, which I had started some time ago, and I was going to do it in all different colors. Let me show you the picture of what it's going to look like when it's finished. This is by Happy Mood Point on Etsy, which I will link just like everything else. I'll link it below. So it's like a set of borders, just all different borders. And um, that one, I think I was doing one over one on 32 count, maybe. I can't remember what the old one was. But I had some Ada, and I decided to do it monochromatic instead of different colors. And I just love it so much. Look at how pretty that red is. This is classic color works. It, it's on um, Bing Cherry is the color. And this is a color I fell in love with when I went to Inspired Needle, my local needle workshop for the first time this month. When I broke my no new haul and I started to binge on some things, I, of course, made a stop over there. And um, well, I'll talk a little bit more about them at the end because I actually picked up a pattern from them that I stitched on. So isn't that beautiful? So Bing Cherry has like a little bit of darker tones like you see here and then a little bit more magenta -y red tones. It's so pretty. And this is on an 18 count. Um, it's Picture This Plus. It's not Barnwood. I think it's Spice is this color. It's gorgeous. I love it. This is another one that's going to go really well with our living room because we have like in our rug in our living room and our like our everything's neutrally toned in the living room. And then the accented colors are like dark red, dark blue, dark brown. So it's going to go really well. I'm excited to keep going on this one, too. Um, board. What did I say? Sampler Decorative Borders. And it's by Happy Mood Point on Etsy. Jacob from Modern Folk Embroidery has, I think he's got a border sampler too. That'd be a neat one to try. Okay. I want to check my notes real quick and make sure I didn't miss something that I wanted to tell you about. Oh, my metamorphosis. 
Oh, there's a really cool idea, actually. I was watching an old video by um, Michelle G. Bendy Stitchy. I've been watching so many old floss tubes because I'm, you know, um, you may or may not know, I started this floss tube channel in the fall. And that's like the first time I heard of floss tube. I've been cross stitching for a long, long time, but I didn't know about floss tube. So now I'm like catching up on years and years of floss tube videos. But um, Michelle G. Bendy Stitchy, in one of her old videos, she did a really cool thing. She got a frame from Michael's that was a long frame, but it was meant to be for uh, smaller pictures. It was like a row of smaller pictures. So let's say it was for like three or four pictures that are three by five. And it was a long frame and then it was matted for those multiple pictures. Well, she took the mat and she just cut out like the part of the mat that separated where each picture would go. She cut those bars out. So that only the outside, the big outside mat remained. And then she matted a long project that way. So that's another option too. Um, so there's so many, I love, part of what I love about floss tube is of course seeing what everybody's working on, but also just like these cool ideas for how people craft um, kind of makeshift um, finishing ideas and all that kind of stuff too. Okay. Um, I think we can, Start looking at some new starts, of which I have a lot of them. So here we go. We, we better get going. Oh, I wanted to show you this too. I had when I was organizing my floss, I had picked up um, a couple of floss boxes from Michaels, and um, they had on the inside they had a bunch of plastic bobbins. And I don't really use the plastic ones. I use the cardboard ones from DMC. So now I had all these extra plastic bobbins. I thought, what am I going to do with these? I'm probably going to be ending up giving them away. But I thought, well, let me just see what happens if I try to paint a few of them. So that's what I did. I'm going to try to see if I can pick them up. See that one? I painted leaves on that one. Um more leaves on that one. My light's probably too bright. I don't know if you'll see it. Um, leaves and a flower on this one. So I don't really know what I'm going to do with them. I just thought like if I ever get my cross stitch journal started, that might be kind of cute to just have some of those frame um, painted bobbins. I could paint maybe related to whatever I'm putting on that journal page, I could paint something similar to it. My painting skills are very limited. I also don't have the right quality paints because like I was using gouache, which is just a little bit thicker than watercolor, which is, this should, should really be done on acrylic or something. Like see how these are coming off. It's not the right paint for plastic, but anyway, trying to repurpose um, those plastic bobbins. Okay, new start. I have one to show you that I'm so excited about. I'm excited about all, so many of my projects this month. I have to like calm myself down a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna hold it up first so you can get the full effect of it. Isn't it just beautiful? I love it so much. This is Pavane for These Times by Long Dog Sampler. And um, I'm using, I'll show it up close to. I'm using DMC 976. It's like a medium yellow, I think is the official color. And uh, this fantastic fabric, let me just show it again. Look at how gorgeous that fabric is. Oh, wait, this is upside down. This fabric's so good, right? It is um, my very first Mystic Fabrics, and it's from Garon Stitchery. Leave it up to Garon to provide a really fantastic green fabric, right? I know um, Gary loves stitching on green. And this is called Cabbage, and it's a 28 count. Um, so for me, 28 count means I'm using three strands over two threads. So nice, beautiful coverage and super easy. I had one day where I all I did was stitch. I did like six hours of stitching, and but I got all of this done in one day. I mean, that's for me, that's a lot. So this is working out. I started the, at the center um, down here is the center, and then I worked my way up to the top. 
of that one. So it'll continue down the bottom half. It'll continue down that same length. This fabric is so I'm just in love with it. Now, I can't take responsibility for this color combo exactly, the idea of putting yellow thread on green fabric, because I saw something similar on um, Handwork Maniac's YouTube. That's Brenda, I think, who's Handwork Maniac. I love her. She's a fantastic floss tuber. I love seeing everything she works on. She does a lot of long dog samplers, and she has a different one, not plain. Um, she has a different one where she also used a different shade of green and a different shade of yellow but the similar concept, um, yellow on green. And I just love this. I love this like bright, sunny yellow like that. That's almost orangey. That's one of my favorite shades of yellow. So super excited to continue on this one. I think it's going to look great. Um, it's a nice mix of like bright colors and this these sort of deeper tones in this fabric too. Um, pave a pavain, I looked it up. A pavain is a dance, like a pr processional dance from 1500s. It's a European dance. And there's a really <laughs> interesting video. I had to smile though, because it's like the, if you look at how dance has evolved, <laughs> they're basically walking. <laughs> That's the dance. They're walking and turning. But the, I think it was the American Ballet Company, maybe. They did, they um, researched the dance and then had two dancers dance it to show what it might have looked like. And I'll put that video below if you're curious to see what a pavane looks like. That was an interesting little um, research rabbit hole to fall down. Okay, next new start is one that I talked about last month. This is a freebie, a free pattern by Jordan Nasser, who is a Palestinian American. Um, Cross stitch. He's an artist, so he sells work in galleries, and he is a cross. His his work is cross stitch, and he put out a free to trees pattern. To trees is a style of Palestinian cross stitch um, motifs, and he put this pattern out. It's called the pattern is called Let's to Trees. It's free, so I'm going to show it because you'll be able. I'll put the link below, and you can download it. Looks like this. And it's um, by Jordan Nasser. Here's his name. Um, and I think it's called, the link to it is actually called Let's to Trees, the actual document. Um, Jordan Nasser's work is super fascinating. I'm going to see if I can get some pictures from his website and put them in. But basically, he, um, a lot of his work is cross-stitched landscapes using to trees style motifs. Because he makes a lot of commentary on, like, um, Palestinian Americans are fighting for land, right? They don't have land right now. They're displaced constantly. They're fighting for a nation. And so he that's those are the themes that he talks about and stitches about um, the idea of land and owning land and having land and looking at land and being on land. So um, it's these really beautiful landscapes. He um, sells his work in New York. I think he's in New York. So this to trees pattern is I just love it. It's so beautiful. And this would normally be, I've been reading a lot about Tetris patterns, and I also donated to, I wanted to stitch on a Palestinian pattern I mentioned last month and donate to something to an aid association. So the one I donated to was Palestinian Children's Relief Fund. And that was one that was recommended on a website called T, um, Tetris and Tea, which is Wafa um website, which is also a fantastic website. But um, this sort of pattern is um, sometimes it's called a chest pattern. And I think it comes from Ramallah in um, like the Ramallah region. And uh, it's usually put on shirts or like dresses. So it would be like the chest motif here. And uh, this is super interesting to read about because what's happening now in Palestine is that these Tetris patterns are becoming kind of like a symbol of unification and like national pride. When um, Palestinians, for example, are going to protests or demonstrations, they're wearing garments that have Tetris on them because they're showing that they, hey, we've been here for a long time. Like this cross stitch has been around for a long time and this is we are a civilization and we're just looking for a place to live, basically. So um, Tetris has a lot of cultural significance 
um, that's really interesting to read about. My One of my resources where I get a lot of information is that Tea into Trees website. I'll link it below. But they have a lot of interesting, you can buy motifs on there. You can join classes to learn about history and culture while cross-stitching. Super fascinating stuff. Um, so this is just a part of the pattern. Like this is the center. So these motifs will work out and then there'll be a triangular part down here. So I'm loving that. I'd like to support more. I guess if any of you want to stitch on this and donate, let me know who you donate to. I, I'll share the link for the place where I donated to. Um, and if you have another association that you hear about, let me know. Because I love, I love combining crafts with activism too. Even though donating is like the most passive kind of activism. But I guess talking about it is helpful too. Sharing information. I hope. Maybe not. Um, so that's. Uh, Jordan Nasser's Let's Touch Trees pattern. Oh, I didn't tell you anything about what I was stitching on. Okay, so this is, this fabric, it's, I think it's a 28 count. It might be like a fiddler's cloth because it's kind of stiff, but also it's softened over time. This might be my oldest stash fabric. I think it's about 15 years old. But I found it when I was moving, and I don't have very many neutrally toned fabrics. They are all like printed or colorful. So this is the one that I grabbed. And then usually Tetris patterns are stitched in black and red, but I worked in a little green as well. I'm going to show you up a little closer here. So what I did was I used, like, for example, this motif here, that it's, it's color changing. It's red to black because it's my PR, oh gosh, Dang it. I'm going to have to look it up. It's the PR that I, oh, 068, PR 068 that I used in my Henna Mandela that I finished mm, last month, I think. So I still had some of that left. So because Tetris is normally done in red and black, I thought, oh, this is perfect. This, this um, silk goes from red to black. I'm using three strands of that to get nice coverage on this 28 count, three strands over two. But then I also worked in green because the Palestinian flag has some green on it. So I thought maybe I'd work that in. But the more I read about it, I don't know if it's like, I don't know if the, there might be meanings behind the colors, like culturally relevant meanings. So I'm not sure about that. Anyway, the flag has green on it. So I think it's probably okay. So like this ladder motif here, that's in green and it's DMC 934. It's like a deep avocado green, I think is the color. So it's just those two threads. It's the PR 068 and it's the DMC 934. And it's like variations of those two used throughout the pattern. I love how it looks and I'm, it's been super interesting to read about to trees and just learn more about how um, stitching in that culture has like plays, plays an important role in how things are there. Okay, so next new start. Okay, I'm gonna bring up Palestine again in a minute, but you'll see why. This pattern doesn't have anything to do with Palestine. This is, I've barely started on it. This is the Ottoman tiles, Ottoman tile work, I think it's called, by um, Viv the Vivsters on Etsy. And I really love patterns by the Vivsters. You're gonna know this one. It's basically just a uh, full of diamonds. See how these two come down to like diamond points right here, like two diamonds meeting. The whole thing is diamonds, like squares turned sideways. And you're gonna recognize it if you follow Letitia Crafty Curator or Marie's, um, Marie's is stitching. I'll link both of their Instagrams below so you can see. They're stitching, I'm stitching the monochromatic version of this. They're stitching the full color. It's beautiful, gorgeous. Like each part of each diamond is all different colors and it's really stunningly beautiful. It's gorgeous. Um, I just felt, remember I told you after finishing my first, um, the first finish I showed you, which was DMC 550, it was that, um, carpet sampler, the ornament sampler, sampler 23. I enjoyed stitching on raw natural linen with a single color. So I wanted to start another one right away. So that's what this is. So I love Vivster's patterns. I have a bunch in my stash that I'm meaning to stitch. I have a a women's history kind of add I'm going to add up one of her adapt one of her patterns to do a women's history thing in a little bit. 
So I just love stitching on her patterns. So I was really surprised this month when she released a Tatrice pattern and um, didn't have much cultural information on it or anything. Um, so I, I decided to ask her about it just because I'm a big fan and I wanted to know, like, do you, you know, are you planning a fundraiser with this or, you know, do you have any more info on this? Because it feels a little weird, especially when, when you've been reading about Tetris and how culturally important it is for all of a sudden to somebody be releasing a Tetris pattern without any context around it. Um, so long story short, we do not see eye to eye in terms of, um, you know, how we should react to the Palestinian conflict for her. I think she sees it at, like, she sees it as political for me. I see it as a human rights issue and it's personal to people who I care about my colleagues and students. So you know how it is with anything. I mean, all of us have colleagues and family members. I know I do who so quickly say things like, well, why do you bring up so many political topics or why that's political? Why should we talk about it? For me, when people say that something's political, I feel like they're washing their hands of it and it gives them an excuse to not talk about it. For me, I feel like if it's a human rights issue, we should be talking about it because there's a lot of injustice in the world, right? And by talking about it, even though it's uncomfortable, maybe we can come around to understanding it better. So I will give her credit though, even though we don't, you know, we're not on the same page with how to think about the Palestinian conflict. She, Viv, Viv Powers is the designer name. She gave a really thoughtful, she took a while to respond, but she did respond. And I really, really appreciated that. She, she was very thoughtful, genuine, sincere response. I could tell it was difficult for her. Um, she's not in a place. She explained that she's not in a place. I had, my original question was, is she considering a fundraiser with that Tatrice pattern? And she said she wasn't because already she doesn't sell many patterns and she's not in a place financially where she can do that. And that's fine. You know, that's a lot to put on a, a business owner anyway to ask for that. I just appreciated getting a response from her because I don't know if any of you um, had been part of the group of stitchers that had emailed another vendor, a big vendor, um, some time ago about um, changing the name of a uh, floss color that was culturally insensitive and like um, flat out racist and inappropriate. And that vendor sent no response at all. And my, the, the communication I had sent to that other vendor was very respectful. I had just bought my first floss from them. So I just said, I love your product. And I, I'd really like to know where you stand on this. And what are you thinking about it? I'd like to continue to buy your products. You know, they, they seem good quality. Even if they, I got no response from that one. I don't know if any other stitchers, if any of you got responses, zero response from that vendor. And to me, like if a vendor doesn't even take time to say, thank you. We're considering your response. Um, we value your business. We will be in touch or something. And then if they're never in touch, that's fine. But even just a courtesy response, if they're not able to provide a courtesy response, to me, that means they don't value my business. <laughs> so for, that's why I, I say all this to say that I appreciate that Viv got back because I put an uncomfortable topic on her plate and not everybody wants to talk about uncomfortable topics. Um, so I give her credit for doing that. And I, I put back at her, I haven't heard back yet, but I asked her if she would consider to actually put the name Palestinian in that pattern, in her Tatrice pattern. Right now, as listed on Etsy, it's called um, the ethnic Tatrice pattern. And you know, honestly, two months ago, if I had seen that, that's a new pattern, but if that had come out two months ago when I myself didn't know anything about Tatrice, I wouldn't have thought twice about it, right? I would have just said, oh, I love that pattern. It's Vivster's. Let me get it. And I wouldn't have thought about it. But this month I've been reading so much about Tatrice patterns and I like, it's such a part of Palestinian identity that to just list it as ethnic doesn't seem appropriate. Do you know what I mean? I don't know if any of you are getting where I'm going. Sorry, I got a little serious, but I, I talk about uncomfortable stuff because that's the only way we're going to reach understanding. Do you know what I mean? So where do, where do we stand? I still love Vivster's patterns. I'm still going to stitch on them. I probably won't get that Tetris pattern though, even though I love it because it's just, it seems culturally insensitive 
Um, but I will stitch on her other patterns. And I, I really, really genuinely value that she responded to something very difficult. I don't think every vendor would do that. So that's kind of where I stand with Vivster's patterns. But you can check it out. Take a look at it. I'm going to monitor it and see if she, what she thinks about changing that name. I mean, labeling things that, as ethnic and not labeling them as their name. Like, if you were to go to an Indian restaurant and have a fantastic meal, and then if you were to tell somebody afterwards, oh, I had a really great ethnic meal, by not using the name of the place, Indian, it's like that name, it carries a lot of like history and geography and cultural tradition that goes along with it that's tied to that place. So I think that's where I'm coming from with like, it's okay to call it Tetris, but it's Palestinian. It's such a part of Palestinian identity too. So to not use the name and to just generally call it ethnic seems disconnect. There's a disconnect there. So anyway, moving on. Um, I start, I have so many more new starts. Sorry guys. I have so much. I hope you're still here. Um, so I had shown in the past this Stitch Ide magazine. This was volume 32. And, um, I, one of the things I loved about it was this Anne of Green Gables, um, pattern on the front. And so I started that this month. And I'll show you where we're at with that. So I have stitched the font for Gables and then I have that middle motif is Anne herself. And then some of the other, uh, motifs that go with it. So Anne of Green Gables is a story. I actually haven't read the story and now I, I think I want to, but I am a big, big fan of the series on Netflix, Anne with an E, which if you're like me and you love kind of human rights topics or um, giving voice to people who don't usually have a voice, this series does actually a pretty good job because um, it shows lots of things that maybe traditional TV doesn't show. It shows different ideas on what it means to be a family. Um, there's a storyline for an indigenous family in that, in like series three, I think. There's a storyline for, um, he's a, a West, a man from the West Indies, a Trinidad, a man from Trinidad, so a black man. And um, the big storylines for LGBTQIA plus community. So the retelling of it in Anne with an E is a very progressive retelling if you're interested in that kind of thing. Um, it's on Netflix. So I've been watching that while stitching on this. I'm curious to see what the original story is like, you know, like how much of the sentiment of those ideas is in the original book. So I'll have to read the original. I'm using two DMC colors. Um, Instead of going with like a bright green, I decided to use, I was going through all my greens because I thought Anne of Green Gables, let me make it, make it green. Um, and I chose kind of two unven unconventional greens. One is like an avocado. I think that's avocado green, maybe. I'll, I'll look up the colors. The other one is kind of, this is DMC 501, I think. Um, like a green blue. And then that has more of like an avocado-y kind of color to it. And I like how they look together. They're sort of, they're not expected, but they look pretty good, I think. This is 18 count sterling. And uh, it's stitching up quick. This was, again, this was, I think, like two evenings of stitching, maybe three evenings of stitching. 18 count Ada works super fast. Okay. <laughs> so one of the reasons why... <laughs> I loved breaking my no new haul was um, to join stitch alongs. So one of the stitch alongs, it was actually not a stitch along and it became one was um, Chris cross stitch. I, I think a lot of us are watching him now. He's a relatively new floss tuber and he had created this hashtag called spooky summer stitch. And um, he didn't intend for it to be a stitch along, but I know a lot of floss tubers like me, we heard hashtag, we're like, what hashtag? what I can stitch and hashtag something. So I um, right away grabbed a couple of um, Halloween patterns because if you're like me and you watch sunshine stitchers after a while, you want to stitch a Halloween pattern. This one has been, I've had my eye on it for some time. It's called dancing skeletons and it's by, I think it's cross stitch fun on Etsy. Let me look it up and I'll link it below. It's just, it's going to be a set of dancing skeletons, like four on top and four on the bottom. 
And I grabbed this because it reminds me of my partner, Steve. Oh, let me show you that. That's back. Because he's always, he's very good. He and his family are very good at keeping the mood light, which obviously I need someone to help me balance that. And um, he's always just kind of um, saying something funny or doing like a quick little funny dance. Um, you know, like if I come home with um, barbecued chip, <laughs> barbecue flavored chips, he'll do like a little happy dance. So these little dancing skeletons, they just reminded me of him. So I'm stitching this with Steve in mind. And I'm using DMC, um, let me look at the color really quick because I want to show you. It's a really beautiful color. It's a DMC color variations. 4072. It's like a light gold and a dark gold together. And I thought it looked pretty good at kind of imitating like the tones and bones. So I think I'm going to go with that for the rest of the skeletons too. It's just so cute. I just love this little guy. And they're all each, so each one has like a different dance pose. I'll see if I can try to find, I don't have a printed picture of it, but maybe I could try to put one up so you can see what the finished one will look like. So that's Dancing Skeletons. I want to say it's by a vendor called Cross Stitch Fun on Etsy, but I'll have to I'll have to check on that. Okay, and then I started one other one for Spooky Summer Stitch, hashtag Spooky Summer Stitch. And that's this one. And you might recognize this one because I think others have started this too. It's the All Souls Verlanden by Quiltify Designs. And Verlandens are German... Um, patterns that have a lot of round circular like rosette motifs on them and um this is benjamin from quiltify design he incorporated skeletons into all the motifs so there's like a little skull up here a teeny guy and then these skeletons here this will be a round motif like this um so this has been a really fun one to stitch on this is um i think this is 28 count it's a bittersweet by lakeside linen so it's like a pale pink a uh, very pale pink fabric. And then I'm using Lava Stone by Color and Cotton, which is a very gently variegated dark brown. It's beautiful. I mean, it's 28 counts, so I'm using three over one in that one. I don't know if you're going to see the variegation. Like if you look at the skeleton's eye, do you see how there's a little bit of a different shade right here? That's that subtle variegation from Color and Cotton that I love so much. So those two are for Spooky Summer Stitch. I have another one coming that I want to start, which is, well, I'll talk about that in plans. Okay. Moving right along, everybody. Um, this one is so, so fun. So this is the Lovebirds Stitch Along. Hold it up a little closer, you can see. And this is by Ana Aguayo, uh, who's Peruvian flair on Etsy. And she takes, she does a lot of different projects, but a couple, um, some of you saw my cat's reflection sampler in my maybe a couple videos ago. She takes these old um, textile, these old uh, pre-Columbian Peruvian textiles, and then she makes, um, as she adapts them into cross stitch patterns. Peruvian tech, old Peruvian pre-Columbian textiles have, they used cross stitch. It's, it was a, a decorative art even back then. So this one is called Love Birds and it's got these like kissing birds. I barely got, like see how these two have face, the brown, the um, DMC 154 and uh, this uh, Caribbean DMC color variations. Or, uh, it's a uh, Caribbean is the color. Let's see how they're kissing. So there's going to be another set of them, uh, them up here. And then there's some of these tinier birds off to the side. And then like these heart motifs. I've got barely one heart and then a flower and then another heart. And there's a border that will go all around it. This is really fun. And I'm enjoying the colors. This It's um, a super easy pattern because I think it's 100 by 100 stitches. So it's small. It's a nice small pattern. Even my cat's reflection when I finished actually pretty quickly. So I think this will work up quicker. The only thing that's holding me up is that I used a 40 count linen, which, hey, do you notice that I've dyed? I've, I tried my very first job dyeing it after being inspired by Carly <laughs> veggie stitches. And um, you probably won't notice. It's just like the palest pink ever. It's a pale, pale pink. So I started with an off-white color. I think it was Corn Tassel by 
excess commodities maybe. And I, I had this hibiscus tea that I used for a holiday punch and I had a lot of tea bags left. So I put in like six or seven into a bowl and put this little um, fabric in and I left it just for a few hours, not for very long. And then I soaked it in a vinegar bath because I read that that's what you do to kind of lock in the color. So it turned out this pale pink, which I'm pretty happy with. And then, <laughs> then I had a little surprise because are you seeing like those bluish splotches all over it? Well, after I took the fabric out of the vinegar bath and I kind of, I, I wrung out the fabric, I wanted to set it on top of something to dry, air dry a little bit. So it, I was in the kitchen and since I, it was just vinegar, which is okay, like to put in your consumables, I set it onto like a cookie, like a drying rack for cookies. I set this fabric down on that. But I think because there was still vinegar in the fabric, wherever it made contact with like the metal grill from the drying, from the cooling rack, it kind of, it like patinaed almost. Like it had these like gr blue green splotches all over it. Are you seeing them? Totally unexpected. So I went with it. I kind of like it. And that's what helped me decide to make this. Um, the second color because it sort of matches those blue splotches. I, I was actually going to use that same the same DMC color variations that I'm using for the skeleton dancing skeletons. It's kind of yellows and golds. That was actually what I was going to make the contrasting color to DMC 154. But then when I saw those blue splotches, I thought, well, let me just let me pick something that kind of goes with those splotches. So I'm enjoying that. The 40 count over two is a little challenging. To Not challenging, but it, it. I'm just a slow stitcher on linen. It just takes me a while to stitch on linen. It takes me a while to find the right spot. And then 40 count is so much smaller than 36 count. So it's just a little trickier to see. But I'm loving it. It's, this has been a really fun, fun one to stitch on. So that's the Lovebird Sal by Anna Aguayo, who's Peruvian flair. And she had us sign up ahead of time. That was actually a free pattern, um, but you had to sign up ahead of time. So now I'm not sure. Maybe I'll, I'll see if it's on sale on her Etsy page. And if it is, I'll link it below. I'm not sure like how to get the pattern now because the stitch along part of it is over. Like she sent out all the patterns to people who signed up. So I'm not sure. Okay. I want to check my notes real quick and see if I forgot anything so far. Cause I, and then I have two more new starts to show you. Thank you for sticking around. Um, oh, I do have actually one more thing. If I've mentioned Stitch E Day magazine before, um, Stitch E Day, it's a Japanese magazine. And if you want to know more about this one, I've mentioned this in a few videos before, but there is a fantastic designer. It's Sarah Murakami, and her um, designer name is Little Stab Studios. She's got some super fun patterns, and she's on Instagram. I'll link her below. She has a blog on her website that is fascinating. It's got all sorts of interesting, like, cultural observations about life. And she lives in Japan with her family, um, so super interesting stuff. But she does blog entries where she reviews these magazines, this, these Stitchy Day magazines. She's got it to reviews for at least a couple, I think. Um, I find that super useful because one thing she does that's fantastic. I, I'm like barely learning Japanese. I'm a pitiful student, but she'll put like, she'll put the name of a pattern in um, kanji, which is like the characters, but then she'll spell it out in English too. I love that. I, that's so helpful to have that language help. Also, it's just super interesting to hear. She's got some really fast. Yeah, just read her blog. I'll link it below. Just go read it. It's so good. It's really interesting. Okay. Um, I have two more new starts. Let's get to them. Okay. Look at this little lovely thing. So... This pattern is called Aventail. Uh, I should have looked up how to pronounce it. I think it's called Aventail. It's pronounced Aventail. It's an ink circles pattern. And this is teeny, teeny. Is it 57 by 57? I'll, I'll double check. Super, super tiny pattern. And I bought this pattern 
during my first visit to Inspired Needle, which is my local needle workshop, which dangerous for me, I found out that that needle workshop is only 20 minutes from my mom's <laughs> from my mom's house. So basically like what is stopping me from going there every time I visit my mom? I like I have to muster up all my willpower to do that. <laughs> But I was there uh, as part of my binge. I said I wanted to go um, visit Inspired Needle. It was such an awesome experience. Like now I get it. When I see all you floss tubers talking about visiting a local needle workshop, whether it's your local one or like one that you go to during your retreats and travels, I I get it. It's it's just such a fun experience. So at, at Inspired Needle, it's um, Nancy and Kathy who run it, and I've this month alone, I've been there twice. Okay. I've visited and inspired me. I went twice. I went back. Usually Nancy is out front and she's just fun to chat with. She's very chatty. And I, um, the second time I went back, I, you know, it was just so casual. Like, what are you stitching on? What are you working on? So the, the, the conversation is really fun to just chat with another stitcher who like, you don't have to explain what two over two means or, or anything, you know, like you, you know the lingo and you know what people are talking about. So that's kind of fun to find that in a shop. Um, just walking around and taking everything in, taking in all their displays, like where they have patterns set up and little like finishing items next to each one. Um, and then all around the top of the um, wall, they have finished items hung up. And those are really cool to see items that they've finished. It's, it's, it's almost like a, it feels like a museum in that way. You know, you're just seeing, and then like Nancy was really great. Cause I was asking her about different ones and we were talking about them. They have a second room in the back with just more patterns and it's awesome. Um, the other, besides the chat, um, another cool thing about, uh, visiting your local needle workshop is, seeing the threads in person. At Inspired Needle, they have one entire length of a wall that's just all threads. So you can see them face to face, like that Bing Cherry that I'm using for my border sampler. I fell in love with it by looking at it. And there's no way, no, vendors are awesome, but photographing fabrics and threads is just hard to get the right, what it, what it exactly looks like. You just have to see it in person. And that's, Next to the conversation, probably seeing the threads in person was like one of the most exciting things about that visit. Um, <clears throat> so, Aventail by Ink Circles. I wanted to pick up something small from there. I didn't want to go too crazy. Um, so I picked this one up. And I'll try to put... I, I couldn't find... I have the picture of it that came with the pattern, but I don't know what I've done with that. So I'll try to put up... The called for thread on it is a dinky dyes. It's called Frio and it has pretty, it's got like blues and orangey tans in it. But when I saw it in person, they had it in stock at Inspired Needle. And when I saw it in person, I wasn't thrilled by it. it the colors in the actual skein did not match the picture. So then I scanned the wall and I thought, well, let me try something different with this. I know I want to get a variegated thread with lots of color. Let, let, let me just see what calls to me as I'm looking at these threads. So I'll show you which one I picked out. It is beautiful. I got two skeins of it. So I have one that I haven't opened yet. So I'll show you what it looks like. It's my very first one by, look at that. And that's so pretty. It's greens, kind of yellowy greens, and then purple is in there too. There you go. There's a better view of it. This is by um, the Thread Gatherer, and it's Silken Colors. I've never used it before. This was a bit of a splurge because I don't usually buy these smaller skeins of silk like this. The color is called Witch's Familiar. It's beautiful. I love it. It almost has like a Mardi Gras feel to it. Like if you look at how it's stitched up, because of the yellow, green, and purple, doesn't that kind of have a Mardi Gras feel to it? Well, let me tell you. The colors are beautiful. They're stunning. But this is not easy to stitch with. I really struggle with it. And I, I, maybe you can give me tips if you're somebody who stitches with these tiny skeins. See how twisted up it is? Even when I untwist it, like with even my bigger hanks of silk, I untwist them and then I cut them into manageable size strips and then I lay them out and that's how I use them. And, um, 
this one, because it's so twisted up, like it never stays untwisted. It's natural tendency is to just keep twisting up. So when I'm stitching, like, let's say I'm pulling, I've pull, put up my needle and I'm pulling up thread that's hanging down here. It, like every other stitch, it gets tangled up. Like I've got a tangle back there. Or I have to hold it awkwardly where I'm holding down the fabric below to straighten it while I'm pulling it up. So it totally slows down my stitching time. So I love the color, but it is, I can't, I don't think I would get another one of these, unless one of you has a tip on how to handle the, like the curliness of it. It's kind of a nightmare. It, it, like something small like this, this should have been a start and finish for me this month. If this had been DMC, no problem. I would have knocked it out, but it's so slow. It takes me so much time to get the fabric through. I also struggled with reading the pattern on this one because it comes on a smaller card. It's a small pattern. So it's packed up in a little envelope and a small card, but the pattern is really, really tiny to see. And like all ink circles patterns, see how intricate it is. I had to make a photocopy of it and then highlight the stitches as I was going along. I couldn't just follow it. Um, and I didn't try, I, I, not with this pattern, but with other patterns, you know, I told you I got pattern keeper. You're supposed to be able, Pattern Keeper has a YouTube channel with tips on how to use Pattern Keeper. You're supposed to be able to photograph your paper patterns and upload them and have them like processed kind of to become digital patterns in the app. I could not get any of my paper patterns to work out. I don't know if it's because I didn't photograph them with enough light or um, I, I just don't know. I don't know what it was, but I could not get them to work. So um, I, I, for some pat for my paper patterns, I'm still doing the old school, making a copy and highlighting the stitches. So uh, Aventail, Aventail, I looked up. It's it's a word for like chain mail that cut like that so like European warriors would use to it's a piece that covers your face that's what Aventail is I just noticed a spider so if I freak out a little bit you'll know why <laughs> it's dangerously close to me okay one more uh new finish from this month and I this is I love this one so much it's like I'm saving the best for last so one of the other reasons I joined I broke my no new haul is because I wanted to join this stitch along and I'll hold it up so you can see it. Check those colors. Aren't they dreamy? Ooh, the spider went somewhere and I don't know where. So um, this is the trans pride tapestry pattern. I mean, check, look, you gotta see these motifs. Look at how pretty they are. I'm so happy with this. So it's the trans pride tapestry pattern. And it is, the original artwork is by Kari Nackett. Now look at, I um, emailed Kari. She's, she goes by Uncanny Kari. I emailed her to ask her how to pronounce her first name, but then I forgot to ask her how to pronounce her last name. So it's definitely Kari, but I don't know if it's Nackin or Nackin. Kari Nackin, let's say. She's Uncanny Kari. So she designed the original artwork. And then D from D's 20 stitches adapted it to uh, this gorgeous pattern. And I just love it so much. These motifs are so satisfying. Let me see if I can. And it's supposed to have a unicorn. I just haven't gotten to it yet. Um, that'll be the like in the center there. So right now I'm just doing the like plant motifs. I love it so much. It's mostly DMs. See, it's all DMC so far. It calls for an Etoile and it calls for Diamants too, which I, I have the Etoile, but I the Diamant was out of stock at 123 Stitch when I ordered it. So I'll, I'll be on the lookout for that. Um, and this fabric, this gorgeous, gorgeous fabric um, is from Fiberlicious. It's 18 Count Ada from Fiberlicious. It's like a pink and blue. So what I did is I, I emailed Fiberlicious to ask. I said, I'm looking for a fabric that's pink and blue for trans pride, but it can have a little bit of purple overlaid. And um, so this is what they recommended. So if you're ever looking for a fabric, like reach out to the vendor and see what they recommend because this, they couldn't have picked a more perfect one. I'm so super happy with this. It's really, really pretty. 
So definitely I'll be working on that one. The motifs, I, probably because it's 18 count, 18 count gets such good coverage. The motifs are really pleasing to stitch because they just, I don't know. They have such a nice, bold graphic quality to them. So they're very satisfying to stitch on. And I just started this, this, this past week. I've just stitched on it a couple of days. It works up quick. As Ada does, Ada works up really quick. Okay, everyone. So those were my new starts. <laughs> I have so, so many in it. Um, unreasonable amount of new starts, I know. But I was so super excited um, to pick up some new items and try some new things. So, um, okay, so the only thing I have left are plans to show you. And I don't have pictures of any of these, but as I talk about them, I'll try to overlay some pictures so you can see. Um, I'm going to stitch for Christmas in July. And um, actually, I do have one because I did kind of a mock up. And I'm going to see if I want to continue on this fabric or um, try it on a different fabric. Hang on a sec here. So I received this month's, oh, that's my frame, this month's Color and Cotton Thread Club. And <clears throat> I told you I've been trying to stitch something right away with those, right? So this is half of them. And to me, those look kind of wintry. So I was thinking maybe I could do something for Christmas in July with those, with those colors. So I actually found a free pattern on DMC. Do any of you look for patterns on DMC's website? They actually have a whole bunch of free patterns. Some are, some are less interesting than others, but some are really beautiful. So this is um, a floral stall, star. I think it's called Fleur Etoile or something like that. And um, you can kind of see the corner. I just worked in one corner to see what the colors would look like together. And I think they're really pretty. They're subtle and beautiful. You can see a little bit of variegation here on the gray. That classic kind of light variegation of color and cotton. The, um, so I may continue these motifs. My, so my idea is to stitch. The pattern is two of these eight-pointed stars. And then I want to put... I was originally thinking of putting the word winter, like in a cursive. I have some um, alphabet fonts that I use sometimes. So I was thinking of putting winter, but then I was thinking, ooh, it would be cute to do bon hiver, which um, literally means good winter in French. And it's not a phrase that's used in France, but it's a reference to a phrase used from Northern Exposure, the TV show. They used to, at the first snowfall in that fictional town, they used to wish each other bon hiver. So I thought that'd be cute to stitch on um, this. I'm just not sure about the fabric choice. I don't know if I want to use like a brighter toned fabric against these more subtle threads, or if I want to stick to this lighter toned fabric with the subtle threads. So um, between this and my Christmas sampler, I have plenty of Christmas to work on. Um, the other set of the color and cotton threads that just came in, see how there's that kind of subtle red and blue and then a white, obviously that looks patriotic, right? Um, I don't stitch a whole lot of patriot. Or, I mean, I do, like I have four patterns actually that I'm gonna stitch for July 4th, but they're like patriotic, how I think of patriotic, which is giving voice to people who don't, who have not been given a voice in our country. Um, and none of them call for this red, white, and blue. So I was thinking then, what about France or something French related? Well, I have a lot of the same feelings about patriotic stitching for the US that I do for patriotic stitching for France. It's like, I think all countries are thinking about what it means to be patriotic right now and what what whose voice you wanna represent. Um, I just read a thing in the news this morning that people are <clears throat> asking for Canadians to rethink how they celebrate Canada Day this year, be, given all of the um, like indigenous school um, bury like the plots, the burial plots that have been found. So everybody is rethinking what it means to love your country and how do you love it and properly give voice to the people who haven't been given voice. So what I think I'm gonna do with these three colors is I'm gonna do something related to the tour, tour the Tour de France. Steve's a cyclist, so I'm always looking for cycling patterns. And I found a really cute free one. I'm not going to remember. Hang on. I want to look it up because I want to name the person. Um, sorry, everybody. Bear with me a moment here.
There's a free pattern. I'll see if I can put up a picture of it too, of um, a bike pattern. Oh, Br Brigitte Dado. Brigitte Dado. It's a French designer who's given a free pattern of a bicycle. I thought it would be cute to use a French designer's pattern because I'm. it's uh, related to the Tour de France, but I'll put a picture up if I can. And so um, I'm going to make it a dedication to uh, the women's tour, Tour de France Femme, that's happening next year. Next year, they're running the first ra women's race for the tour after a very long time not taking women's cycling, cycling seriously. Um, so I'm thinking I'm going to stitch uh, Bleu, Blanc and Rouge, three bicycles. And then I want to put in a quote by this fantastic lady named Louise Roussel. She's uh, just a French um, cycling enthusiast. She's not a pro cyclist, but she has written a book recently that I'm waiting to, for it to arrive. It's called Avocicle. It's like, get on your bikes, basically, is what it means. And it's about um, empowering women through cycling. Because in France, and probably in the US too, I don't know, there's still a lot of sexism towards women in athletics and women in cycling. So she's written about her experience, and she's interviewed women who love cycling. So I'm hoping to get a quote from her from that book and incorporate that quote um, into what I'm stitching. So that's how I'm going to use these. So that's a future plan. We will see how that how that turns out. And then for 4th of July stitching, I'm going to pull out four of my whips that for me are patriotic. Um, and I will I don't have them here, but I'll see if I can put up pictures of where they're at right now. Um, one of them is my excerpt from The Hill We Climb by Amanda Gorman. I just took a few um, few lines from her poem and started to stitch them, and it's been a while since I've worked on that one. Um, another one is I'm adapting Hands Across the Sea Where Flowers Bloom, and I'm going to make it a tribute to BIPOC women. Not only BIPOC, because I'm going to put... Um, I'm not going to think of her name now. Greta. Greta Thunberg, I'm going to put her on there too. Um, and then I have a George Takei sample or a quote from George Takei. I'm going to um, work on that. George Takei, I read an interesting thing in the news today that, is it the Air Force Academy? I think so. The Air Force Academy is distributing copies of a book by George Takei. And it's called, They Called Us Enemy. And it's about his experience when he was a kid in the internment camp, Japanese internment camps here in the U.S. So they're distributing that book to all um, new cadets. So I think, or do you call them cadets? I'm not sure. Anyway, new students at the Air Force Academy, which I think is extraordinary because having the tough conversations is how we uh, grow. And then I also have a Vienberg Designs, the Patchwork Quaker States. And that's the one I've shown in my old videos. It's where um, it's a red, white, and blue pattern. And um, also at the same time as I stitch on that, I'm trying to read from different American voices and then eventually work in the names of those voices into that pattern too. I have, in terms of other plans, I have created Stitch and Mommy. I think she's Sarah, right? Is it Sarah Stitch and Mommy? Um, Sarah did a really cool thing where she organized, she made documents to organize all of her whips, like all of her many, many whips, like I have many, many whips, but she organized them by size. So she had a document with just small projects, a document with just mediums, and then a document with all her large projects. And she said it's helping her choose because basically if she wants to try to accomplish something, she can look at the list of all her small projects and be like, oh yeah, this is only 100 by 100. Let's do that one. So I started three documents too to try to organize. Um, I have them up, but I, I, I don't know if I'll show you pictures or not. So one document is for my projects that are 150 stitches by 150 stitches or less. The medium one is 250 by 250 or less. And then large is everything larger than that. So I'm just trying to like get it, kind of get my head to around like, hey, you've got all these small projects, like why not knock out some of these small projects? Um, so that's something I've been working on. I'm going to do more floss organization. I'm almost, I've got things almost tidied up there. And then I'm waiting on, I'm going to start Silowitches by Teresa Koget. It's a lot of people, I, I want to say maybe Gary from Sunshine Stitch is doing that one. And maybe Chris from Chris Cross Stitch is doing that one. I don't remember. I don't remember who all is doing it. But 
there's a vampire in that pattern who is just so cute. I'll try to put a picture of that pattern up there and try to point him out. It just looks so fun. And then the other day I saw that color in cotton had an orange fabric that looked really pretty. It was a cantaloupe um, fabric. So I th and it's um it's a monochromatic piece and all the motifs are super cute. So I thought, okay, let's just get on this Halloween kick a little bit more and see what else we can do. So anyway, we are here at the end of this thing. Thank you so much if you stuck around. Um, love to hear, as always, I love to hear. Thank you. There are a few of you who always put comments on the video and I really appreciate hearing from you. I love seeing what you do on Instagram too. It's so fun to check in with everybody. I love cross stitch very clearly. I am super obsessed with it. This has become, it always has been, but it's just been such a nice binge this past um, nine months to work on that. So um, I will check in again at the end of July, 31 days, everybody. We get 31 days to stitch. So I hope you all are having a good summer so far and I hope you're having a stitchy summer and um, I will be in touch again before we know it. <laughs> Have a good rest of the day, everybody. Thanks for watching.